All right, so part two um, of orbital mechanics as we go ahead and look at. So dig in a little bit more. So um, we look at ground traces. So we put our satellites in the ground so therefore we can look at things um, on or in the sky so we can look at things on the ground. Um, so what we're doing is thinking that there's a string that's attached to the satellite itself and it's creating what it's covering there on the ground. So this satellite right here is going through and that is what ground covering as it rotates around. So we can go ahead and look at this graph and this chart and calculate and move some things around to cover what we want to go ahead and cover as we go along. So after a full day of ground traces, satellite with 90 minute um, orbital period would look like this because um, the Earth is rotating around it. So therefore it'll span all the different longitudes for us. So they go through over and over again. It retraces for a full day, and there's software that goes ahead and does that for us. Um, but we notice it doesn't cover the north or the south. It covers nice, you know, the United States that's there for living there. So that's kind of what we care about there. So, but there's different orbits we can go and look at that. So we look at the inclination and change that, and we can come up with this nice looking graph. Um, here for us. So it's a little messy for us, but the colors are coordinated. The yellow one with the small inclination covers more right around the uh, equator. Red, a little more inclination, a little more. Purple, and then orange, covering a little bit more of the whole world that's there. Um, but again, not covering as many or as dense in the area, so you're just covering over at different parts to be able to look through um, and see with those. So we change that inclination, satellite 3, either around the equator or back, or polar, polar orbit, covering some different things for us. Um, so the polar orbit's used to describe orbits of 0 or 90. Um, so just be able to look at and see what those. So satellite equation orbit just covers the uh, equa equator, while polar orbit would pass over the entire Earth. Oop and then back, and then up, and then up, and then up, and go through. Um, so appear on the southern, go to the northern, appear on the southern, go to the northern diagonals there, and then it's just two traces. It's not like a V um, shape. It's not just turn it and then head back down. That's there. So here we're looking at the first pass at zero to degrees, and then it goes over and moves over um, 25 degrees. So how do we get that west longitude or that shifting that's based on inclination and the period itself? Um, and we can go ahead and look at both of those and do calculations for us. So determining this um, period that's ground trace, um, the orbit of satellite remains fixed in space and the earth, earth rotates. So the satellite remains fixed, earth rotates. Um, the westward regression of the ground trace is due to the rotation of the earth. How many minutes it takes the Earth to rotate one degree? So 144 minutes divided by 360 degrees. So four minutes for each degree. Um, so 24 times 60 is the 1440. How many degrees would pass the satellite's orbit on consecutive orbits? Um, we have 25 degrees as the example we've got there. So how long it take the Earth to rotate this many degrees? That's the period of the satellite. So if it rotated 25 degrees, we have a four minute per degree rotation. So it would take 100 minutes for that satellite to rotate around the Earth. So the right ascending, right ascension of the ascending node or RAN. Satellites may have identical eccentricities, semi-major axes and inclinations, yet may still have oriented differently in space. They can be rotated or twisted about the Earth in different ways. Each satellite here starts at about above a different longitude on the Earth. However, longitude can't be used as a reference point because the Earth will rotate underneath the orbits, changing the reference longitude as each one of them passes. So each one of those are same inclination, same eccentricity, same axes, but they're just rotated a little bit different. So looking at the ran of each individual one. So here's the different rans we're looking for. Um, the purple pink one has a zero and then 30 degrees orientation. So shift it off to the right 30, 60, and then 90 degrees ran off of our focal point that's there. So right ascension of the ascending node is the angle measured along the um, equatorial plane between the vector pointing to a fixed reference point in space. 
the first point of Aries, also known as the vernal equinox, and the point of the orbit where the orbital motion is from the south to north across the equator. This point is called the ascending node. So this is always pointing off in the same spot as space. The Earth is rotating underneath it, and then the satellites are covering those different points as it's going through. Oop. The argument of pedigree. Um, orbits may have the same E, A, I, and RAN now, yet may have different orientations around the Earth. The location pedigree point can vary within that orbital plane. So the argument of pedigree describes the orientation of the orbit within the orbital plane. Where is it? Um, apogee, when it, and where is it? So where are they? So here, um, angle from the ascending node to the perigree point in the direction of the satellite's motion. So here, W is the ascend, the normal basic one. Um, 90 degree rotation is purple, 180 is red, and then 270 that's there. So normal zero would be all of them. That at their apogee is over here at that point that's pointing off, but then you can rotate those different values. So when you look at this higher one, I think we'll discuss it here soon, but the further it is, the more time it has to look over one space as it goes ahead and rotates around. Um, true anomaly, after an orbit and its orientation have been thoroughly described, there must be a way to describe the satellite's position within that orbit itself. True anomaly is the angle between the perigree point and the satellite location uh, measured in the direction of the satellite's motion. So this value is constantly changing as it moves. True anomaly is 0 degrees at pedigree, 180 at apogee. So we've got 0, 90, 180, 270, and then back to 0 off to that side that's there. Kepler elements, you got eccentricity and semi-major axis for shape. Orientation is inclination, the RAN, and the argument of pedigree, and the location is the true anomaly. So the time, time stamp is the epoch, which is used um, when you're talking about all of them together. This is when um, you can figure out exactly where a satellite is or the snapshot. Like right now, there's a satellite in this location, um, and that is its epic that's there. So Kepler's law, satellites will travel around the Earth in elliptical paths with the center of the Earth as one of the foci, and a line drawn between the Earth and the satellite will sweep out equal areas during equal time periods um, anywhere along the orbit there. This means that the speed of a satellite changes as the distance between it and the Earth changes. At pedigree, the satellite is moving its fastest, and at apogee, it's moving its slowest. Um, the period in orbit related to its semi-major axis, again, that equation there. So slowest, fastest, and we're looking at videos before, kind of put that out. So now you can complete the orbit description assessment. You can go back and look at the video or look at those notes inside of 233 to answer those questions in a little more detail if you need it.